Hey there, I'm Kayleen Glor. I'm a veterinarian and I'm one of the owners of Clarendon Animal Care in Arlington, Virginia. I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about allergies and the itchy dog. So broadly, what are allergies? Well, allergies are your body's immune response to things that are normally in the environment, but it's not a normal immune response. What happens is your body sees something that isn't a real pathogen, it's just kind of there. Take pollen, for example sees that pollen, it looks at it and goes, ooh, this might be a really nasty thing, and so creates this giant inflammatory response. And that inflammatory response leads to what we see as allergies. So we have three main categories of things that our itchy dog tends to react to when we're talking about skin allergies. The first one are gonna be ectoparasites, fleas, mites, things that are biting their skin and they're having a significant reaction to the proteins that are present in that parasite's saliva. Food. So we have some dogs, and this is actually not as common as a lot of people sometimes would like it to be because we have a lot of control over the food. We have a lot more control over sort of what these dogs are exposed to. But with food, you can have abnormal responses to proteins that are present in the skin, and they can manifest um, proteins that are present in the GI tract, and they can manifest by allergies and inflammatory response in the skin. But thirdly, and probably the most important um, one and, and the most frustrating one and the most common reason for allergies in dogs, especially here in the Mid-Atlantic region, are going to be your environmental allergies. And we can split those up into seasonal allergies that are environmental and non-seasonal allergies that are also environmental. So seasonal environmental allergies, we can relate to that a lot. We've got uh, ragweed that comes up in this fall and the spring and people get like stuffy noses and you know watery eyes. Well, dogs can also have allergies to pollens and things that bloom only at certain times of the year. So certain types of grasses, certain types of trees, um, things that can be very local to a um, region um, of the country that they are reacting to. And that, that's what a lot of people relate to and think about with environmental allergies. But you can also have environmental allergies to things that are there all the time. So actually some of the more common uh, environmental allergies that we see in dogs are to this second category. So to things like dust mites and storage mites. Um, my dog growing up and who I had in vet school, we did allergy testing on her. And guess what she was allergic to? She was allergic to human dander. Um, and actually recently I had a dog that was tested for environmental allergies and came up strongly positive to being allergic to cats. It can happen. So why did I say that environmental allergies, while well, being probably the most important thing that we see related to the itchy dog, but also the most frustrating? Well, that's because allergies, we really don't cure them. Sometimes we can augment the immune system and sort of trick that response into not happening with immunotherapy. And that's everybody's goal, like that's the dream situation. But the problem is, is that um, it often means lifelong treatment. So humans who have undergone immunotherapy, they're often giving themselves injections on the regular basis, and they often do it for many, many years or for the rest of their life. The same thing with dogs um, is our immunotherapy options, while awesome when they work, one don't always work because sometimes these dogs are just allergic to far too many things for us to do appropriate immunotherapy to. And two, they need to be kept up. Three, they sometimes take a little bit. So sometimes it can take months after starting immunotherapy. Now that's not to say that we shouldn't find out what a dog is allergic to. That's always important because there might be some strategies that we can implement to avoid the things that they're allergic to. And in some cases, like I said, immunotherapy, so this is desensitization, vaccination, changing how the immune system is responding to these normal things in the environment, that is the gold standard, the ideal scenario, but it's not often realistic or practical. So what we're left with is management of allergies. It's a chronic problem. Oftentimes we can't get to a point where these dogs 
are off medications or off sort of continuous bathing or ear cleaning or topical creams and ointments and things like that to try and keep their skin at bay, similar actually to eczema in people. Um, so what the frustrating part is here is that you can have a dog who we're managing and they're going along and they're doing just fine, but then suddenly things can get so much worse. Well, what's happening there? Secondary skin infections, secondary ear infections, they are really common when we've got the itchy allergic dog. So why is that? When we have a lot of inflammation in the skin, what happens is we got these normal, normal tight junctions between those skin cells. They're being a good barrier to the normal yeast and bacteria that we've got in the skin. They're not gonna let them cause a problem. Enter inflammation. Those tight junctions loosen up and we now create an environment where these opportunistic infections can come in and cause problems. That's right, I said opportunistic. So when we have these dogs with recurrent yeast infections, we get these dogs with recurrent skin infections, the organisms that are causing those infections are almost never primary pathogens. They're not things that are gonna get transmitted dog to dog. They are taking advantage of an immune system that has allowed that skin barrier to create an environment where they can take hold and they can thrive. They can replicate, they can cause problems. And then what happens is now we've got an irritated, inflamed skin with the secondary infection. Here comes more inflammation, which causes more itch, more discomfort, more problems. So this is where working with your veterinarian to make sure that you're managing any secondary infections that might be present and having management strategies in place to try and prevent those secondary infections. That is really important in helping keep these itchy dogs more comfortable. So what does that look like? Well, in treating the infections, we have to find out, is it yeast or is it bacteria? And making sure that we're treating appropriately. And oftentimes that can involve the use of systemic antibiotics or antifungals. Bathing, um, we love bathing. Bathing is really nice because those medicated shampoos can help remove the amount of, um, reduce the amount of yeast and bacteria that are present on the skin. So there's less organisms there who have the opportunity to create a secondary infection. They also can remove some of the actual physical allergen that's present on the skin, driving that initial inflammatory reaction. So bathing is likely one of the hallmarks and foundations of a lot of itchy dog management strategies. And this may or may not surprise you, but we're often asking our pet parents to bathe their dogs fairly frequently. So when they're flared up and we've got a secondary skin infection going on, we're often asking them to be bathed two, sometimes even three times a week. And it's really important how we do this too. We're not just trying to get them clean. We're trying to get the, the antiseptics that are in that shampoo, the sort of calming anti-itch properties that are in these medicated shampoos, have enough contact time with that skin so they have an opportunity to kill those secondary yeast and bacteria and help provide some itch relief to that skin. Because if we can get itch relief, we're also going to lessen the risk of secondary infections. So you guessed it, bathing is part of a management strategy to prevent skin infections as well. So oftentimes once I get these guys under control, we'll have a regular bathing routine. And it might be once a week, it might be every other week, it might be once a month, but oftentimes when I've got these allergic itchy dogs, bathing is part of their routine. And then there's a lot of um, prescription and over-the-counter medications that we'll often end up using to help reduce the inflammatory response in the skin and help reduce that itch response. Um, on the over-the-counter side of things, we'll often use fish oils, so high doses of omega-3 fatty acids that EPA and DHA can have some nice anti-inflammatory properties. It's not always appropriate to use in a dog, especially one that, say, might be prone to pancreatitis. Um, some dogs with sensitive gastrointestinal tracts, they just they can't handle the amount of fish oils that we need to help um, actually have that anti-inflammatory response. 
But other things that we'll sometimes reach for are going to be antihistamines. Um, antihistamines can be helpful in dogs that have mild itch, mild allergies. And that's because as a molecule, histamine is not a big player here in these allergic itchy dogs. It's a little player. I mean, it's there. So antihistamines help some, but you're not going to take a really itchy dog and give them an antihistamine and expect them to be normal. That's just not how the physiology works in these guys. Um, Benadryl, um, it's, it's helpful in my hands. I find it makes the dogs sleepier and so they're not itching as much because they're sleepier, but I don't see a reduction in the inflammation of their skin with something like that. Um, other drugs that, uh, for those of you who've got that itchy allergic dog that you might have heard of before, steroids. Steroids are really potent anti-inflammatories and like we discussed, inflammation is the hallmark, the foundation the reason why these itchy dogs are such a problem, it's the inflammation in their skin. And steroids are great, but they do come with a lot of side effects. There are some newer drugs out there that target specific molecules that sort of trigger that itch response. They're called interleukins. Um, and what interleukins are, are there different types of molecules that um, signal one cell to the other and tell them to produce molecules and, and, and sort of trigger that inflammatory response. So apoquil is a drug that helps block certain specific uh, interleukin molecules that can help reduce that itch response. It's nice because it has a lot fewer side effects than steroids do. It's definitely something that you should have a conversation with your veterinarian about because it's also not right for every dog. Um, we get to be a little bit hesitant about using a drug like that in a dog that might be prone to certain types of cancers. Um, and then there's another uh, product out there called Cytopoint. That's actually an antibody. Um, and what it does is it blocks a molecule called interleukin-31 so it can't bind to the cell. And that's nice because it's, it's actually, it's not a drug, it's a biologic. Um, there's no real metabolism that happens. It doesn't enter the cell. It works extracellularly within the body and blocks that molecule from hitting that cell and causing those downstream effects. Um, but the problem with it is that it's, it's short-lived. So in dogs that have mild, very specific seasonal allergies, it might do a great job in reducing their itch for 8 to 12 weeks. In dogs with really severe allergies, it might only help for a week or two. On average, it's about every four weeks that these guys end up getting these injections, and that's long term. Um, sometimes we'll use a lot of these different drugs and therapies and shampoos and supplements. We'll use them all together. Um, like with a lot of chronic disease management, we find that sort of assessing my patient, addressing any secondary problems that need to happen, and sort of picking and choosing from all the different management strategies that work best for an individual. And it might not be the same for this dog as for this dog as for this dog, because they might all respond to some of these treatments just a little bit differently. So it's important to sort of look at different management strategies, because if we use a little bit of different strategies, oftentimes we're reducing the amount of everything to get them controlled. But remember how your dog reacts and how they respond to treatment might be different than how your neighbor's dog reacts and responds to treatment. And so it's really important to talk to your veterinarian. Okay, so let's recap. Allergies, what are they? Well, they're an abnormal immune response to normal things in the environment. How do they create that itchy dog? Well, spewing lots of inflammation in the skin. What are some of the problems with that inflammation? Well, it's itchy and uncomfortable, but also we get these secondary skin, secondary ear infections, um, which can make things a whole lot worse. So best strategies, management strategies, chronic management strategies. Um, we talked about bathing, we talked about fish oils, we talked about antihistamines, we talked about um, medications that might be available, we talked about immunotherapy. Um, so there's a lot of things out there, a lot of things that are going to be helpful for one dog that may not be helpful for another dog. So it's really important to tailor your dog's up approach to managing their allergies with your veterinarian and make sure that like if you've got a strategy that you're working with and it's just not working, 
you got to let them know because then we can sort of pivot and switch and find something else that's going to work for them. Or if we find something that works really well, yes, let's let's talk about it. Let's let's know that this works really well and come up with a plan to have that ready to go any time that we've got an allergic flare up. Um, so your veterinarian is a really important teammate in managing your dog's allergies. They're really important in helping, making sure that we're addressing, assessing, finding secondary skin infections and treating them appropriately. And they're really important in um, sort of coming up with a multimodal strategy to help chronically manage your dog's itchy allergies. All right, have a good one.